Here we go, live right here on BoxWave.com. 9 a.m., you know what time it is. We make your body move, we make your body groove, we make your mind think, we make your body sink. Into your chair, if you're at work, we know you're doing the jerk. If you're standing up, we know you're doing the twerk. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, fellas, you know what time it is. We crank the go-go, we crank the slow, we crank the jazz, we like the bobo, we crank it all. Here on the Peace in the Morning Show. Funky Friday, baby. That's how we do. You know what we do. We got the Queen. We got Delegate Daryl Barnes. We got Darius A. Stanton. And we got you on the Peace in the Morning Show. Funky Friday, baby. Come on, crank it up, Ron.
Hello? Hey, girl. Oh, what's wrong? Girl, I just went to a major dealership and got ripped off on a luxury car. Oh, well, I just got a great deal on a luxury car at Star Imports in Camp Springs, Maryland. They took their time with me, treated me with respect, and helped me find a perfect car. Hey, DMV, looking for a unique car buying experience? Tired of high pressure sales? Good news at Star Imports. You'll be delighted with our boutique style car buying experience. We're committed to treating you with the utmost respect, even if you have less than perfect. Perfect credit. Check out our impressive selection of pre-owned BMWs, Mercedes, Benz, Lexus, Jaguars, and other imports starting at $5,988. For fast online guaranteed credit approvals, go to starimports.com. That's S-T-A-R-R-I-M-P-O-R-T-S dot com. Or call 301-423-8000. Star Imports, home of the boutique style car buying experience. Located in Camp Springs, Maryland. Off exit 7B off the Beltway. Next to Red Lobster. What a drag. I need to get early. Welcome to the Peace of the Morning Show. Yeah! No doubt about it. Good morning, good morning, and good great. morning. Yes, give thanks to Peace and love. For all his great and righteous resources, all his great and righteous ancestors, yes. all the beautiful things that you have blessed us with on this day. And today, my peace and love, what's up? Peace and love, son, love you. It's Funky Friday, baby. Let's kick it Messiah, off. Messiah, we love you. That's right. It's Funky Friday here on the Peace of the Morning Show, and we are going all the way live. As a matter of fact, you know how we do on Funky Friday. So, Ron, kick it. We're going to honor our brother today, Hugh Masekela. That's right. The South African trumpeter, the brother who just brought, you know, music to the world. But not only that, he was a father, a husband, a strong activist, mm. probably one of the world's leading activists in terms of musicians, you find someone else who had that kind of impact. Harold Belafonte doing the civil rights movement here in the um, United um, States. I'll tell you, um, Leta Mbulu. Leta um, Mbulu. Um, Fela Kuti. Fela, yeah, Fela Kuti. And also, I want to um, talk one sister. Who is it? Marion McKeever. Marion McKeever. No doubt about it. Well, this brother's right up there with those folks, and he took a huge stand. So if you don't know who he is, go look at my page. There's some information on there about there it. Hugh, H-U-G-H, Masakila, M-A-S-A-K-E-L-A. Go look that brother up, okay? From South Africa, trumpeter. We're going to play his music all day. We got a brother from our neck of the woods in the studio, Mr. Roland Hall. A trumpeter who's going to talk a little bit about his experience and, and how Hugh Master Killer impacted his life as a trumpeter. You know, the brother played the French uh, French clarinet, um, the fugal horn. Uh, he played a few other instruments as well. Uh, bugle, trumpet, the brother was cornet. Yeah, the brother was, he was on, he was on fire. So Hugh Master Killer, with much love. Peace and love. What's up, Miss Chili? No doubt about it. Glorious Thomas, hey now. So look, we are so excited because it's Funky Friday. And we're going to funk it up like we always do. Last Friday we were in Los Angeles out there with VIP Records. Uh, shout out to the brother Calvin Anderson and the Anderson family that started VIP Records, which launched careers of a whole lot of West Coast rappers. So thank you, Mr. Calvin Anderson, for opening up VIP Records to us, you know, putting us um, on the West Coast map with the peace in the morning show. Del Rey uh, Richardson, brother, put out a serious, serious product project dealing with the Constitution. Twelve of his songs are twelve different laws that have been put in place in the Constitution that will help you be able to deal with your personal, professional, your life across the board as it applies to law. And you know how important it is for us in terms of the African-American community when it applies to law. So by all means, uh, you can definitely hear some of Dell's music, Master Mason, uh, coming up real soon. But today, you know, we're cranking it. So, Ron, we're going to crank it up. Then we're going to bring on Mr. Hall. Then yeah. we're going to jump onto our holistic sexual healing and family lifestyles. We got some shaker rays. We got some drums. Yeah. We made it make it rock. We made it make it roll here on the Peace in the Morning Show www.voxwave.com that's v-o-x-w-a-v.com v-o-x-w-a-v.com you want to see the whole production and you want to call us up at 240-719-2563 that's 
six zero. Give it to him again. If you have any experience at all with this beautiful brother, Hugh Masekela, or anyone who is affiliated with him and his kind of music, or the revolution of the music industry, two four zero seven one nine two five six zero. That's right. Give us a call. We want it. You know, some of the favorites, Grazing the Grass is probably one of the uh, ones he's been most known for. But uh, In America. In America. True that. True that. Because he's definitely an international uh, brother. And uh, I have one. Ron, I'm going to run if you don't mind. Uh, it's my favorite Hugh Masekela song. What's a super easy way to tell that your bet is awful? And supportive of the work that he's doing. Got a little commercial on the ad, and skip that, and roll it. Yeah, y'all ready for the brother to sing? We got to go over there to the mic. but in the heart of South Africa in turmoil, in turmoil, he brought a sound of jazz.
that was overbearing, a lot of negativity and heartache, suffering, shame, loss of dignity and pride in the African man, woman, family, and community. And yet he set forth a pace, a speed in the music industry to rush the revolution through music. He really pushed it through music, his songs, his lyrics, the sadness of people's faces that he saw, he wrote about them. Every trip he made, he embellished what was happening and put it into something so fruitful you could eat the music, so to say. And so it is with a great honor and privilege that we honor this beautiful brother today. And he's lived a good life. He will be missed by many. And those of us who have him in our hearts on a regular, we can always call on him family, children, grandchildren, wives. Remember to always call on his spirit, another great, big, divine, and righteous ancestor on the cosmic line. Peace and love, Humas Akili. No doubt, peace and love. We um, pay homage to his family as well. Uh, the late, well, not late, but the sister, yeah, he was married to Mary Makiba, you know, um, and uh, another great artist out of South Africa. And, um, you know, during the time of apartheid, uh, he um, was forbidden. They stopped him from coming back to the country, you know, um, because of his views and the fact that he took a stand, you know. And during the era now that we're dealing with the boycott of the NFL, we're on the eve of the Super Bowl, and, um, you know, some of us are still not watching. You know, we've kicked it. We are not taking the ticket. We are kicking it and not supporting uh, the NFL until we see a major shift in American policy with regard to um, the killing and shooting of unarmed African-American, white, Latino, and any other person here in America, you know, by law enforcement. And we've seen the numbers of incidents recently uh, the most recent situation that's been revealed where the officer told the rookie officer, you know, that if it was America, what I do with three juveniles, the rookie <laughs> officer asked, and he said, if they're black, kill them, period. That's what he said, you know, and then he went on to say a whole lot of other very negative, ugly things that were tracked in his, his uh, messages and Facebook uh, inboxes to this young man, telling him to do some very deplorable things that you'd only – have heard about doing slavery or some mass rape or something of that nature. It was horrifying, the things that he said. My point being, though, uh, Hugh Masekela took a stand uh, at a time just like this uh, with regard to uh, apartheid, and he didn't worry about not being booked or not being able to play in concerts or people not accepting him. And fortunately, there were a number of artists and, and people around the world who knew that apartheid was wrong and what was happening in South Africa was unacceptable. And so he took a stand and he brought the light, brought to life and gave people hope uh, through music. And so he is a giant uh, in the stand that he took. He has a son named Sal Masakila uh, and his uh, current wife, Elenum uh, Kofi uh, Masakila. So, you know, that his, his family, he had a, a small a, a private ceremony, uh, which is, was his wishes. And so uh, we definitely want to pay homage to the brother who was born April 4th, 1939. He was 78 years old. And I got a chance to, to, to actually see him live. It was phenomenal. And you told me it was twice. So yeah, I saw him we, as a I, child. I, as a small child, we had a uh, Mac Rux, who is an amazing musician, horn player himself, flute and horn. And uh, he, French horn wrote out our music sheets for all the music that I used to do there. And at the famous ballroom in Baltimore City, we had a concert. And it was with Hugh Masekela. And the same morning, it was very important, August the 4th was Mr. Cecil C. Burton's birthday as well. And um, he came the day of his mother's death. He said he's still playing the horn player mm. because he wanted to be on that gig. He wanted to represent what he was about. 
Mm. And he knew the struggle that Hugh Masekele had been through to even get into Baltimore for this particular concert. So I was amazed. He came, we went, and it was beautiful. And you were small. You were about, mm, I guess, about eight or nine. Eight. Yeah, about seven or eight. We went to that concert. But he's a beautiful person. And I just encourage musicians, parents, when you have children who love music, get them an instrument. My mother always said, get them a piano, a guitar, a horn, some drums. Get them something that they can play and remind themselves of where they come from. Right. Unlock that other side yeah, of the Yeah, we hear it. We'll recognize it. You know, we, we bought some drums in today. We just... You can just hear a, a certain sound, and it will remind you of, of sound that you used to hear a long time ago. So, um, right moving along, just wanted to say that about no doubt. a good well, time. And the famous ballroom in Baltimore City at the end of the, what is that, train track used right. to be. Great time. Great people came to that place. So, not only did the brother uh, reach and touch people's hearts, but he also was recognized for his work. Uh, in 1988, he was a Tony Award winner for Best Original Score. You know, that's a big deal. Um, as a matter of fact, that's 30 years from, uh, from this year. So that was 30 years ago that he won a Tony Award, um, which is awards that are, are you know, given for theater in, in Broadway. Um, and then he won a Grammy Award in 2013. So the brother, five years ago, was still winning Grammys. Well, he was powerful. At, at 73 was years powerful. old, the brother was still rolling. He was creating. He was still creating. He still, was creating. still creating award, Grammy Award for Best World Music Album in 2013. You know, so just... He was an acoustic person. I want to remind that to modern-day generation musicians. Um, acoustic versus digital. Mm. A lot of you like the digital sound. However, you do not know the science of the digital sound. The digital sound cuts into the wavelength of the essence of your psychological mode and ability to be creative. Because you are taking the plug out of you and plugging into you your plug into something to make it work falsely, like a drum machine. It's not the same as a drummer, a trap drummer, and three good percussionists put a drum machine to sleep. But people want money so badly that they're pushing the digital age on musicians to make them feel like you don't even need to play. You don't need a musician. You don't need to learn music. Because follow it, when you learn music, you become professional. And when you become professional in the music world, you can teach and you can make money. And you can share. You don't have to have a teacher's degree to teach music when, you, when you're a professional musician. People hire you because you already prove you qualify. Right. You understand? So when you become a professional musician and you can teach and you can share, you unlock the monster that a lot of children are holding on, adults too, that if they just had an outlet, which schools have purposely in many areas shut down music, art, theater, sports, and travel. Those were the main outlets for children to have to bring out what was happening to them in the home if they had or didn't have resources. Somebody died, some kind of abuse, anything. Music was the outlet, the venting station. And so when you don't have that today, you're not learning music. You should learn. You should learn every key in the music scale. You should learn the pentatonic, all the black keys. You should learn to study and breathe music. And you will recognize that a lot of people today who are so-called artists are not studied musicians, have not got a clue about a note, can't play anything, and are just being used to push garbage and promiscuous behavior. So keep that in mind. Be a real musician. Study. Learn something or be a good writer. Write lyrics, um, a song that has a message, because that's what's important, that's songs right. that have messages. Speaking of which, we're going to go to a quick 
clip of uh, Hugh Masekela at the Africa Festival in 2016, something that he was doing live uh, over in Africa. We're going to turn it on real quick so we can have a little, uh, some sounds of the brother in the studio himself, Mr. Hugh Masekela. When we come back, we will hear from our good brother Roland Hall uh, about the music and how Hugh Masekela impacted his life and his world as a horn player. Tell 
right here so in the studio with us this morning is our good brother mr roland hall welcome to the piece of the morning show bro. Thank you, brother. hey everybody so how are we look, doing today we're doing wonderful man great, great. so you know we roland first of all thank you for being here my, uh, my pleasure. pleasure my pleasure thank you for engaging us in us with regard to uh one of the greatest hugh mass tequila yes he was and you're a horn player yourself yeah i play the trumpet okay how long you been playing the horn i saw that age of 12. okay Sound yeah. like me over there we're, we're yeah. carrying that trumpet. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you my trumpet story in a minute. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. 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 I started at the age of 12. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, mom, she, uh, she uh, insisted. Insisted. Hey, I you know, know all man? about it. Come yeah, on. I mean, she, she, she knew something that I didn't know. That's right. You know, because I'm playing that. Playing the horn right to deck. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And uh, well, we got to get you come back on the show and play for us. Sure. Is that a done deal? Done deal. Y'all heard it right here. <laughs> you heard it, brother. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, what impact he had on me was, you know, he gave us hope. Mm -hmm. He gave a lot of kids hope, man. And uh, this guy here, uh, he, you know, he had a sweet sound. Right. He had a great sound. And when he played, he didn't just, you know, play notes. This guy sang through his horn. Ooh. And see, that makes a difference when you sing, mm -hmm. you know. It, 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 he has a fingerprint. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. A fingerprint. Now, it's only one, you know. Right. He, he was, well, to me, he was like the, the Louis Armstrong of Africa. Right. Okay. Even right. though he was an icon of the world. Sure. You know? Sure. And, uh, it's a beautiful so, way to explain. That, it, you know, that, that inspired me. Mm -hmm. That inspired me. So um, playing young and, and playing the trumpet, the, the, the people, they see the end product on television. Yeah. But they don't see the work ethic. Oh, no. That goes into it. You know, uh, without saying. Right. Without saying. Without saying. You know, I have the same spirit. You know, as far as playing, you know, doing dates and all. Even if I'm not playing, that don't even bother me one bit. Mm -hmm. I still play every day. Right. I right. still practice. Still right. practice. Still and, and that's important. That's right. what musicians you know, do. And uh, <laughs> it all boils down to you and the almighty. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to that point, you know, uh, it's on. It's on. It's on. Right. It's, it's on. Nothing else matters. That's right. It Nothing proves God, God, the gods, the universe is filled with music. Every species on the planet Earth created by nature Natural life producing forces make sound, make music. Exactly. Everything makes music. Wind going through leaves make music. Through branches rubbing together make music. Yeah. And see, all that is authentic. Exactly. You know what I mean? No computer stuff. Exactly. That's what I'm getting Raw. to. Mm, Raw. Raw. That is the acoustic Raw. sound we're talking about. Exactly. And that is what he favored and promoted so much. Um, I encourage people of all generations and classes and religion and races to encourage your children, your family, to become musically aware. Learn the value of other people's music that you don't even know, instruments that you've never seen or heard of. Because what I learned as a singer is how to improve your sound is mimicking nature. Exactly. You can make a sound like a horn, a flute, a piccolo. They make sounds like birds. That's the roots. Birds. So I study that and you could Time for yes, my trumpet great. solo. Let me see if I can do one. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think the birds will be kind of jealous, don't you? <laughs> she threw it down, didn't she? Yeah, she laid it down. She threw it up, man. no yeah, doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, it. Give thanks and praises. That was good. That was the, the, good. You, you mentioned the roots, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the power in the roots. Um, and how, you know, another thing I want to congratulate you on because, brother, you know, and you all need to see this brother. Uh, you Master Killer was 78, you know, playing the home. Mm -hmm. You 70. I'm, I'll be 70 this year. 70 this year. 70 Young this good brother. Look, look good, brother. Uh, <laughs> thank Looking you. Good, no thank doubt. You. No Young doubt. brother. Back at you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for the grace of the good Lord. Yes. Uh, good Lord and by his grace. Yeah. So moving on, you know, what are you doing musically right now? Right now, I'm playing with uh, uh, a bunch of agency uh, bands. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I get calls. And they call, and uh, I'll just, you know, just go and do the job. Right, just go yeah. and do it. That's what it's like when you're really yeah. um, a well-trained musician. You can go anywhere and play at the drop of a hat. That's why you need to learn your instruments. That's true. And you need to learn to read so you can read other people's music. You can always get a job. You know, one of the things that I'd like for you to share uh, with our audience is I want you to speak to parents about what, your mother did for you because what happens is we often get into a situation as parents where we want to uh, if our children push back and say well I don't want to do this I don't want to do that mm -hmm. you know they they kind of then the parents they 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 give in yeah you know, you know and it takes discipline and foresight and vision to understand why it's important for you to make your children stick to something finish something that they start why it's important for them to be disciplined, why it's important for them to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the act or the music or the language that they're learning, but it's the activity and the consistency and the behavior that they're learning how to do something over and over and over again and be good at it so they learn how to do those things in other and apply that in other areas of their lives. Well, that's what music does for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it teaches you about life itself. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, so, I mean, I had no pressure because I like music. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the trumpet, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And uh, so, and uh, at the age of uh, 15, I started playing with my first professional band. Oh, wow. Matter of fact, it was a group from Annapolis called the Van Dykes. Oh, wow. You played yeah. with the Van Dykes. I knew it. <laughs> you don't remember me, but I remember you. Oh, boy, I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I, when I first came in here, I, it's just years. Mm -hmm. I used to write the music for the Van Dykes. Oh, boy. I used to write with... Um, um, the tall, light-skinned guy. I can't John? Think of, yeah, John. Yeah, you know John just passed, right? Yeah. yeah. I, used John to write, Bryant. Mm -hmm. I used to write with John and, um, uh, oh, my God, everybody in the Van Dyke. Okay. Yeah, my mother okay. lived on Spar Road, no Madeline wonder. Johnson, and we used to go to rehearse down by the Bryants okay. off of Smithfield Street. You mm -hmm. remember down there? Bayside School. Right school by Bayside School. Yeah, school. And school like they 10. used to let me um, help write lyrics because I was a good lyricist. Mm-hmm. So isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. Yes, so you yeah. started playing at 15. So who bought your first horn for you? My mom. Right. She, she bought me a brand new horn for she Christmas. Supported, so you got to support you. Oh, man. I used to shine that thing it. every day. You right. know what I mean? I just kept it clean, man. Right. You know? and, uh, and I, you know, I did most of my practicing outside, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the time when you first start, it don't sound so Yeah, sweet. you don't sound so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I had no pressure, and I started, you know, playing uh, with a professional group at the age of 15. That was awesome. And so, so when that, when that they happened. They were big back then. Yeah. I mean, they, they, were, they, they had, were the band. They were, they for were. anybody who know local bands, they were the Van Dykes out of Annapolis, Maryland, were playing everywhere. Yes, that was were. that was big, and anybody coming in town, they opened up for for those groups. So they played with all the that greats. They played with all so the greats. So who are some of the people that you that, that you played with while you were with? Okay, uh, well I played with Solomon Burke mm. and Mr. Pickett, Wilson Pickett, mm. The Temptations, mm. and uh, Bobby Parker, mm. wow. and the great Chuck Brown, wow. and a group uh, from uh, D.C. Uh, old group called Black Heat. You Black remember Heat. them? Wow. Yeah. And uh, mm. Trouble Funk. Oh, you know. man. You can't, this, uh oh, I think it's time for some trouble. It's the time for some trouble. Wow. Right? Get us some trouble real quick for, yeah, and for the, Funky Friday, baby. Yeah. Can't well, wait to hear you play. Yeah. Arthur Conley, you remember him? I do not remember. Yeah. You know, he, uh, 
Otis Redding was his manager. Okay. Remember the guy just saying, do you like good music? Sure. Yeah. That's, sure. Him. That's him. That's okay. him. Do you like good yeah, that's music? Him. That's him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, that's some of the people I played. Play phenomenal, with. phenomenal. Well, we, we, we Big Trouble Funk fans here. As a matter of fact, right. on, on Funky Friday, we, we funk it up, and we are going to funk it up. When We're we getting come ready back. to All funk right. it up. Hello, Big Tony. That's right. Big, <laughs> big Tony. When, when we Good. come back, we're going to deal... We're going to have a little touch on, and I'll tell you why we're going to touch this, because from a health perspective, um, Hugh Masekiela died of a long battle with prostate cancer. And so I'm sure, Mom, you can give some yeah, remedy I'm gonna give you with some regard notes. to. So when we come to jumping on this trouble funk, we are going to get busy with the holistic and sexual healing Woo! family lifestyle. Right. But you know we got to crank that trouble. So we're about to crank that trouble funk. Live and dance and funk it up on the stage. Dance. Yes, right. You about Big to see girls, it. Big girls, get ready. Y'all ready? To <laughs> Who you say get ready? All the big girls. All, the ladies all right, in the house. All the big girls. They like to be called big girls. They want to be. Called I like it. Girls. I was so skinny until I started eating African food. <laughs> Eddos, yams, sweet potato. Salah Jenkins said peace yum, and love yum. to you this morning. Mom. Love you, Salah. Um, breadfruit. That's a, a beautiful artist you need to get on our show who does sculptures out of this world. It's oh, Salah like, Jenkins. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm ready on that trouble, baby. Okay, let's go. I'm ready, too. Today is how do you feel about yourself? This is my son letting me come on this program. Uh-oh, here we go.
Crank it in here, baby. Uh, you heard that? I heard that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, my brother, did that bring back some memories for you, man? I'm telling you, man. Playing with trouble folks. I'm telling you, man. Big Tony, boys, they rock. Man. They rock. Yeah, they So rock. where did y'all yeah, play? Rock. You remember any of the places that y'all played? Well, matter of fact, was down at, I played with him down at, uh, down at the Staten Center. Oh, man, the Staten yeah, Center. Right. There it is. He brought it all the way back right home. Down your hometown. Right back to hometown. Yeah. Yeah. I probably was there at that joint. Hey. Richmond, he, Virginia down there. Hey, he played right. at the Staten Center. You know, anybody yeah. from the Nashville, you know, used to go to the Staten Center, Pasta. no doubt. But look, it's time for the holistic sexual healing and family lifestyles. A brother, Hugh Sequila, died of prostate cancer. A long battle with that. Brothers, get your prostate checked. But most importantly, come off of the acid foods, uh, those things that cause inflammation, those things that cause uh, cancer, come away from those sodas, um, meats, you know, those toxic foods, but we're going to tell you what you can eat, okay, what you should be eating, what you should be putting into the body, uh, alkaline water, those things that you need to help you to maintain zinc, uh, uh, turmeric, ginger, those things should be regular season, seasonings that you're using in your foods and that you're drinking with. Queen, you ready to roll? I've been ready since I was born. Okay, what's well, going on with your born self? Okay, um, everyone, peace and love. want to remind you about um, taking care of the prostate, the genital area, taking care of the entire human system, which is fusion. I always talk about the um, togetherness, the unity of the body, mind, and spirit all working together as one. So the stomach is working with the mind. The stomach is not craving food that the mind knows is bad for it. Like when someone says um, cigarettes cause cancer and then you say, oh, I know. You don't know. You're aware. When you know something, you do something about it. And so being aware in that sense, doing something about it is a lot of men hold their urine. People in general, let's just talk about men right now since we're talking about the late and great Humasakili. Hold their urine. That's the first number one bad thing to do. The testicles and the soup, the bag, they're not built to hold urine. So you have to let it out. As you can't hold a dog in the house who have to be, he'll pee on your floor or a cat, where people hold their urine, hold their stool, and it backs up into the blood system and corrodes the system. So fatty foods, acidy foods, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, those things are bad for your prostate. Heavy meats, beef, uh, shrimp, oysters, seafood, bad for your prostate. Don't take my word for it. Look up the health. Look up the health practitioner. Look up the health doctor. Look up the health agent. Look online for people who are studying and promoting quality health, and you will see everything that I'm telling you as fact. Herbal energetics, that's what you need. Herbal energetics. You need to know alfalfa, Angelica, astragalus, astragalus, all the things that start with A, what do they have to do with your energy body? B, bayberry, barberry, burdock, what is that for? Learn about it. C, calamus, cardamom, cayenne, chamomile, very good. You mix chamomile with a ginseng, powerful. Some people want to get a speedier day. You're already eating well, but you want to speed up your day. Put a pinch of cayenne pepper in it and some ginger and speed up your day. You feel like you're getting swelling, inflammation. You're having a hard time urinating. Problem with the prostate. Uva earthy, kidney and liver. And um, say my herb for prostate. S. S. Not a straight. Sassafras. No. Uh, S. Say it. Sir. Uh, come on. Sassafras. Come. No. Sassafras is one, but that's not um, it. What is it? What is it? Starts with an S. Come on. 
Oh, sass, 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 Keep your body clean, build up your immune system, your lymphatic system, ward off sickness and diseases, seaweed without canola oil. Do not buy canola oil. When you're cooking, use a little coconut oil. After the food is cooked, put a little coconut oil in it. That breaks down into what works with the neurological center. You keep the body agile. Keep you thinking, keep your mind straight, and also helps you with the body and the prostate. Drink a lot of water. Don't eat after 7, 8 o'clock at night. Stay off the heavy foods. Once you cannot turn it into a liquid, it cannot be digested. digested in the human system and therefore can become esophageal cancer. So that those people who are having acid reflux and you just... Going to buy medicine for it, going taking some. Just of cut that time. out. You know yeah. the acid reflux is caused by the buildup of and backup of a whole lot of acidic foods that you're eating, that you're sleeping on, and those things are backing up in your system. And lo- there, a lot of them are stuck in the esophagus because the the voice, uh, the saliva, mm-hmm. is used to help to break down the food mm-hmm. along with the jaw bones and the teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is to make the food become a liquid. Once the food becomes a liquid, it can travel through the esophagus. That is the road that it takes to get into the blood cell. If it does not become a liquid, which no meat or cheese can ever really become a liquid inside your body. Amen. It will become putrefaction, dead waste matter that smells, that rottens the breath. When you open your mouth, it smells like something died. You go to the bathroom, it smells. Your arms smell. You also can sit up, get up from the chair and smell the seat mm. and see what kind of scent you're leaving on the seat. That can tell you right away if you have cancer. Yeah, you have to stop being a slave to your cravings. Oh, stop that's a beautiful a slave way to, your to say it. The brother yeah. said it. So, beautiful. Yeah. So share with us um, briefly as we wrap up our Funky Friday here with Holistic Sexual Healing. Again, those herbs and foods that men can use to help create a healthy prostate and reverse the cycle of prostate cancer and problems with the prostate? Um, You can use parsley, rhubarb. You can use um, red clover, clean the blood out, sarsaparilla. And also... um, Put turmeric in your food. A little turmeric. Add that to every meal. Just start putting a little turmeric in your your food. And clean up your body infections with yellow dock and burdock and um, astragalus. Get yourself some tinctures. Drink a lot of water. Do not eat and drink at the same meal. Eat the food. Chew everything until it becomes a liquid. Drink the liquid, the juice, or the water, or the tea, 45 minutes to one hour after. That gives the body a chance to break the food down into the parts of the nutrients that can go through the rest of the body. So it's a big difference in being healthy and um, being unhealthy when it comes to sleep and movement. Healthy people jump off the bed and get going right away. Yes, they do. Unhealthy people always take a long time to get away from the bed. And wonder why their muscles are tight. Because they're not doing the things that they need to do to make the body, mind, and spirit have fusion. They're doing things that cause confusion. Remember, your body is your temple. Yes, the body is the temple. And keep it clean. And also, it is on loan to you, and you have to return it. So do your best to keep it in excellent condition. Okay, thank Sounds you so like much. Music. And how does that have anything to do with sex exercising? You figure it out. <laughs> if you're having prostate problems, you're going to have sexual problems. You thank heard you. that. You masculine, we love you. Hey, so Amen. look. Uh, we want to send this out one of you Master Keeler's songs 
as we close and wrap up on the Peace in the Morning show, we want to thank our brother Roland Hall. I want to thank you. No doubt. Yeah, beautiful. Tell the people, you know, trouble for those folks. who are listening. Chunk. Uh, there he is. There Chuck Brown, the Van Dykes. And the great right Bobby here. Parker. And the great Bobby Parker, his brother played oh, with yeah. us. And we here with the great Roland Hall, who's going to come <laughs> back and play his horn. Thank you, Lenny, for bringing that to us and making sure that we were able to. Mousy Thompson playing tomorrow night down at the Carlisle Club. Uh, so if you want to be involved in that. Hey, uh, Mouse. But um, wrapping up, you know, one of the songs that Hugh Massaquilla played or created, his one of his uh, hits was I Am Not Afraid. And this album was a very powerful album, a very powerful song. The song you hear in the background now is Night in Tunisia. But I Am Not Afraid, I want to just commend and reach out to the brothers who are working to make sure the brothers in the Nation of Islam, the brothers who... Uh, out there in the more Science, the brothers who are in fraternities, the brothers who are in prison right now, but helping other young brothers and to, African to get them work into the right space, in the right head space. Uh, the brothers who are out in the street who are working to bring brothers out of that life of selling drugs and hustling and doing anything else that's not positive. Brothers that are working with children, brothers that are teaching in school, brothers that are in corporate jobs, that are making sure that they take a stand for women of all races, of all colors and creeds, to make sure that we take a stand. So brothers, we thank you and we salute you. Those who are working, those who have not been working, come on brothers, it's time to get up. Woo! It's time to do what you gotta do. It's get up, make brothers! Move, brothers. You know what I mean? Get up, yeah, brothers! To take a stand. So I want you to hashtag this, push it all day long. Hashtag men for domestic peace. Men for domestic peace. Men for domestic peace. Also check out the Annapolis LOC. They're doing a black history program coming up this month in February. Uh, so Black History Month is right around the corner. We're going to make Black History all year long. We got some hot things for you, Grandpa's News, and much, much more on the Peace of the Morning Show. Thank you. So all we're saying you. to you, brothers, is we are courageous. We are in the spirit of our good brother. You know him, Hugh Massaquila. We love you. Peace of the morning. Peace and in the morning. we're going to roll out with that good old... Peace in the morning. Friday. Peace in the morning. Love you, Lenny. <laughs> love you, Lenny. Hey. Love you.